everything in the boxes. And as soon as you're through with that, we're going to get the hand trucks and we're going to move that rack outside. It's a wooden rack that they have. This guy gets in his truck, hightails it to Reading, tells Frank Boone that the guy picked him up, threw him out in the street. You know. Frank says, no kidding. I know him pretty well. I'm sure that did happen. <laughs> He's had a few cocktails with him already. <laughs> so, we loaded everything up. He put the rack outside in the merchandise and my dad called Frank Boone on the phone. He says, you better get up here and get that stuff because I am not guaranteeing it's going to be here overnight. It ain't coming back at my store. And don't send that guy back here. He says, that guy don't want to even come near you. <laughs> so Frank drives up. And Frank says, and he's red-headed too. And he goes, let's go to the bar and settle this. It's about 8 o'clock that night to get a phone call from the bar. Lloyd, bring it all back in and you got to price it. <laughs> uh, you gotta put it all back on the shelf. You have to know Frank Boone. Yeah, because I don't know. Some people didn't like him, but I love that guy. Oh yeah, he was. Uh, he's but he can guy. get along with that fine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. shit. Yeah. They yeah. talk the same language. Yeah, they're the same kind of guys. Yeah. Well, guess what? That guy never came back to the store. Again. Well, he he didn't want him to come near 299 East. You and I didn't want to go back to the store. Right? <laughs> <laughs>